All right, here we are on Martin Luther King Day, uh, Monday, January 16th. Um, I'm Patrick Cody, and I'm joined once again by uh, the new state representative for Windsor 5 District, Woodstock, Plymouth, and Reading, Tisha Buss. Tisha, thank you for joining us once again um, and uh, making time for this on, on the holiday. Thank you for having me. Great. So uh, last week, we talked to you about uh, the first week, which I know was kind of a whirlwind with... Uh, you know, the opening of the session and getting your committee assignment and the inaugural address and just, uh, I'm sure it, it, was, it was pretty much a whirlwind. Now you've got a little over a week under your belt there in the, in the state house. I wanted to hear how things were going. Oh, I've got it all down. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> That's right. Um, it is an extremely exciting process. Uh, you know, most days are filled with meetings from the start of the day to the end of the day, whether it is in my own committee, which is where the large bulk of our work happens as legislators. But we also go to the floor so that we can hear all the bills that are introduced. So each day we show up, there are around, you know, 10, 12 bills that they read the first line. Um, we can see the, the bill itself. And then that bill is immediately referred to the committee for the committee to work on. So right now it's just a quick skim of, of everything that might be coming down the pike later on for us to vote on. Uh, then we also have our caucuses. So I'm a member of the Rural Caucus and the Climate Caucus, as well as the Women's Caucus. And those meetings, um, the Rural Caucus and Climate Caucus are far more about many different types of overreaching issues. The Women's Caucus is a bit more, um, you know, this week we heard about the, from the Department of Corrections and uh, buildings for the governor's office and those uh, collaborations on how we need to invest in our prison system in Vermont. So then we also this week had briefings um, from state agencies as well. So those will continue in the late afternoon. So it is a it's a jam-packed day starting at 8 a.m. and typically not ending until six. And then you have to go home and do all of your work for the next day. Mm -hmm. And what how's that adjustment been for you? It's it's a little intense. Um, you know, some of it is just simple systematic things such as the iPad wasn't working for me. I would want to attach something to a constituent and it was on my computer. So I'd have to email it to my iPad so I could get it out. So I went to our wonderful technical team and uh, was able to switch everything over to my computer. So my functionality is a little better. Um, also figuring out when you have to be somewhere and when you feel that you can get a briefing. So you know, it is okay to divide and conquer. Um, so I'm learning amongst friends. So now sometimes at the end of the week, we said, okay, next week, you'll go to climate, I'll go to rural, we'll share notes. And that will help us manage our time a bit better. Um, you said one thing, I just want to get back to the, the when you said you're part of those three caucuses, the rural caucus, women's caucus and the climate caucus. Yes. Okay. And so uh, with the Rural Caucus, is that the same as the, the Economic Development Working Group? It is not. Okay. Um, the Rural Caucus meets from eight to nine uh, once a week. And we and it is a bunch of legislators. And then they do invite speakers and other uh, advocacy groups that are promoting things that could be of benefit to the Rural Caucus for us to learn about. Um, and they could also be folks that are um, advocating for legislation to encourage economic uh, impacts in rural Vermont. So, you know, for instance, there's a housing bill that's coming through that would help rural communities also deal with um, designation areas downtown, um, reduce some of the restrictions around getting water and sewer hooked up to accessory dwelling units or units where there's one house that might turn into a duplex or a triplex. So right now you have to get that permit with the state and a permit with the town for those interconnections. And this would relax those restrictions so that you only had to do it with one agency instead of two because you're just doubling work for the same purpose. So things like that are being worked on, which I think will be uh, great to help uh, with rural Vermont. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Yeah. Um, I, I just wasn't sure. Do you know anything about, is that working, uh, the economic development working group, is that, is that, is that still, uh, um, are they still meeting? Is that, well, there is, is a working group here biennium? in Woodstock that's mm -hmm. continuing. Right. Yeah. There, there's a legislative one. I know that was in the last biennium and I didn't know if there was some synergy between, if that was continuing or if there's some synergy between your caucus and, and, and that, but, um, you know, I haven't read any emails mm -hmm. with a specific invitation with that um, name, but I will also say there have been some consolidation because tourism used to be its own caucus, and they've decided to put that in the rural caucus because a lot of tourism happens in our rural communities right. more so than in Burlington. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of emails, I mean, are, are so far, uh, I know it's only been a little over a week, but are you getting flooded with emails from constituents? Are you get, get feeling phone calls? I mean, how, how's it been so far with just interacting with um, the general constituency? There have been quite a few uh, folks that have written to me. Some folks are using my personal email because I've known them for such a long time. Other folks are reaching out through my legislative email. And I've been able to get back to most people, but, um, you know, today is still a catch up day for me as well. Um, some of it is that I need to learn before I can respond. Um, hopefully, you know, in several months <laughs> or maybe several weeks, hopefully. And it depends upon how close the issue is to the committee that I'm working on. If you email me tomorrow about the education committee, I'm going to be um, far more in the know than if you email me something about fish and wildlife, where I have to go track down who has that information. Um, and you would like prefer to pe for people to use the the legislative email. I'm I'm sure to keep help keep things organized or. Yes, and it and we'll and put it, that on the we'll flash that on the bottom of the screen. Yes, there. yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um. So tell me about the uh, what, what are you working on right off the bat with that with the House Education Committee? I know that was your uh, your committee assignment. So uh, what's going on there? Well, this week was all it started with education finance, and we had three different state economists that focus on education finance, and they punted to each other um, to explain to us all the individual components. And the first day. I felt more confused about it than I did before the meeting. But then the second day, this amazing man named Brad James came to speak to us. And he's one of the few people that truly understands and speaks in sort of like real, real language um, regarding all of the components. And so that made a lot more sense to me, you know, that we essentially, um, our school says we need this much money for our expenses. And then the state says, okay, we're going to send you meals and rooms money, sales tax money, and homestead and non-homestead property tax money. And that's going to determine uh, your property tax rate. In essence, that's that's a very, very um, mm -hmm. basic form. So we we learned a bit more about that. One of the, one of the things that's coming down the pike for us is to learn more and study income-based education financing to see if that is a manner of, of funding education that might be more equitable. And until I learn, I, I don't know, and I don't have anything to report yet, except mm -hmm. for that that will happen. And I will report when that does. And I know Meals and Wheels is pretty near and dear to your heart. Meals and Wheels is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I grew up in the restaurant industry and actually cooked Meals on Wheels um, back in high school. And it is very, very important. There are many, many food programs out in the state of Vermont that help folks that uh, with qualifying incomes. The concern I have for seniors is that those food programs, it's raw, it's raw food. So when I have when you have a senior that is really struggling to walk and really care for themselves, and then they have to then focus on meals, uh, on you know, cooking the meal. The Meals on Wheel program is is just so important. Um, there are so many seniors that subsist on, you know, some simple hard boiled eggs for breakfast. Then the lunch is their main meal and cheese and crackers is their dinner. Um, that is this is important. And the state uh, there's federal money that comes through 
to aid the Meals on Wheels program. And there's a bill coming through this year that would add $2 per meal to help the Meals on Wheels program. So we'll see um, when that gets through committee, what that ends up looking like at the end of it. But I am a huge proponent of, of the Meals on Wheels program. Um, and I also wanted to touch on, uh, or I guess you want to touch on the, the government um, operations committee and what they were working on in terms of uh, the use of technology. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Well, one thing that COVID did bring into our lives more is technology. And one of the things that I think a lot of uh, towns have recognized is that with the ability to join meetings virtually, we have a higher attendance rate. I can be home as a single mom and join the meeting, but I can't necessarily find childcare so that I could go join the town hall meeting live and in person. And I think this is really important to our overall democracy. There are, again, the same folks that are receiving Meals on Wheels. If you're 102, you may not be able to get to the town hall at 7 p.m. So um, that is certainly what government operations is looking at to have this be able to continue because I think the overall thought is that it does help our democracy and it does uh, promote greater attendance. And with more voices, we will represent more viewpoints. That's important. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I know a lot of towns have been using a, a hybrid meeting format over the last year or more. Um, where it's like part in person and part remote and uh and 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 the state house all of your committee meetings are are live streamed and recorded and available on youtube and then uh available for stations like ours to pick up too and, and share with uh with the community at large so there is a lot um but you know just speaking from my own experience there's a lot of uh uh you know the the technology is great when you have it um and it's all working together but getting the technology working all of the time is 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 a real challenge you need to have a good team of people who is was just focused on that to make it to make it work so that it you know is so that it is accessible and it is um uh you know uh, meeting its uh, goal Agreed. And I'm, I'm hoping that what we could do is even if a person can't stay for the whole meeting, if there could be someone that goes to set up the equipment and then just do a quick training on how to turn it off, um, that, that would be really amazing. That person wouldn't have to stay for the whole meeting. But um, I think that, yes, we're going to need some further assistance in order to mm -hmm. make this work for a lot of towns. Well, um, it sounds like uh, we'll be we'll be talking to you again soon, um, and and it does sound like we'll be uh, joined by the Vermont Standards uh, Tom Ayers, who will be taking over my role, so I can focus on things behind the scenes. But I'll still be there with you, and uh, and uh, I appreciate you making the time to do this because I I do think it's 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 great for. Um, you know, to engage the sort of community and inform them on, on what you're doing. And also just hear from you, your reflections of, uh, you know, a first time legislator going through the process and uh, of, of legislating. So um, <laughs> it's educational for all of us. Excellent. Well, good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for doing the good work that you do. And I really look forward to uh, continued meetings like this. And it'll be exciting to have Tom Ayers in collaboration. Mm -hmm.